Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on my thoughts on movies and stuff. Today's video, as requested by a viewer, is on Just Mercy. I'm sure you've noticed by now there's no pretty lady singing Feel It and we faded in from black like a serious episode of Oprah and that's because I can't really afford to be funny about this movie. I know most of you come here to watch me tell jokes and to watch Guy 1 and 2 banter but they're not going to be in this video and I'm not really aiming to be funny in this video so if that's what you're more into then I suggest you rather watch my thoughts on The Misfits. I think it's pretty funny. Other people have told me that it's pretty funny and I think you'll enjoy it far more than this video. Otherwise, much like Big Daddy Ramaphosa, we're gonna sit down and have a family meeting. Don't worry, it's nothing too serious. So as I was saying, a viewer requested uh, that I do a video on Just Mercy because they wanted to know my thoughts on the film. And of course I obliged, it was around the time where I still had a few things in the pipeline. I still had to get the, the Space Jam 2 video out and how fun that was. And we're waiting for the seas to clear in order to, to, to get a few other pictures under our belt. But until then, uh, we decided to use this 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 time to to do a to do a to do a viewer selection. This isn't my first time watching Just Mercy. The movie came out in 2019. I watched it sometime in 2020. It brought me to tears then. It still brings me to tears now watching it for the second time and it'll probably still bring me to tears in the future. Just Mercy is a true story based on the book by the same name written by Brian Stevenson himself and it goes into great detail about how he graduated from Harvard Law School and drove straight down to Alabama to begin his work with convicts on death row. That was in 1987, if I'm not mistaken, and he's now been doing that work for over 30 years. What was happening was a lot of people were ending up in death row due to a serious miscarriage of justice, whether it was because their appointed lawyer didn't feel like fighting for them when their trial came up, or if they were just black at the wrong place at the wrong time. These people were honestly just doomed to die by the police or the powers that be or whatever you want to call it. And at the time, it seemed like Brian Stevenson and Ava Ansley were the only people who were willing to stand up for them. The movie closely follows Brian Stevenson, played by Michael B. Jordan, and how he tries to overturn the conviction of Walter McMillan played by Jamie Foxx, and for some reason everybody calls Walter McMillan Johnny D. And it shows the lengths that Brian Stevenson had to go just to prove Johnny D's innocence and to get him off death row, to stop a state from killing an innocent man, an innocent black man. Listen, you're just going to have to take my word for it when I tell you that not a single person drops the ball on this movie. Everybody had it on lock, especially the cast. Brie Larson, Rafe Spall, Tim Blake Nelson, of course, and even O'Shea Jackson Jr. There isn't a single misstep in terms of their performances. But Rob Morgan... Rob Morgan as Herbert Richards will probably bring you to tears. I thought watching it for the second time that I'd be able to cut the waterworks, and I couldn't. In fact, it hits a lot harder watching it a second time, especially after what America went through in 2020. Oddly, I see Robert's performance in a completely new light, and I see the entire situation in a new light. And that new light really just went to show that nothing has changed in the US for so many years, no matter what. Not only are the actors to be congratulated, but the production team as well. The blue grade on Johnny D as he unknowingly drove into the sheriff's trap right at the beginning of the movie really sets the tone for how hard this film is going to kick your heart in the ass. And no matter how many times I see it, watching Brian framed in the same way they frame Johnny D at the beginning of the movie when Brian is being accosted by the police, it gives me a heart attack every time, it seems, because I wrote him off. I knew that he was going to be fine. I knew that there was still about an hour of movie to watch, yet, yet I still wrote him off. 
I still wrote him off and this is my second viewing. This film is amazing because it really is one of those times where you can tell that every single person who worked on it knew, knew they knew what the assignment was and they worked together towards completing that goal and they knew what this movie represents and nobody wanted to not carry their weight. You can really feel the effort pull through on this film. I'm not going to give this movie a rating because any kind of rating I give this film would be so biased even I wouldn't be able to take it seriously. And I don't know who could give this movie any kind of negative rating but the IMDb and Rotten Tomato scores are on the screen if you want to see them, if you want to know. But I feel like it doesn't matter. I really feel like any rating I could give, any rating from IMDb, Rotten Tomatoes, film critic, whatever, in the grand scheme of it all, it, it, it doesn't mean anything. Not, not against what this film represents. When this film was shown at the Toronto International Film Festival, it got an eight minute long standing ovation. And as far as I'm concerned, that's, that's, that's more than enough that needs to be said. Now the review of this movie is essentially over, but if you don't mind me standing on my soapbox for a bit, I'd like to add a few more things. If you've paid any kind of attention to this channel, then you'd know I live in South Africa. And if you followed me in 2020 on Twitter, then you'd know about a certain run-in I had with someone I condescendingly referred to as Pomeranian Karen. To make a long story short, Pomeranian Karen called the security on me, my brother, and a guest we had while we were filming a music video in our neighborhood. A music video. My family has lived in that area for over 10 years, probably longer than she has. So you, you should have seen the looks we exchanged with the security when they showed up and they came to see the suspicious people taking photos of people's houses. We were just minding our own business. And I think more credit has to be given to the guards for talking us down because one of the reasons why we decided not to take the matter further is because they vouched for Pomeranian Karen and they, they just didn't want us to have any beef. I'm hungry though. <laughs> to this day, it baffles me because I was wearing sweatpants and carrying a giant circular reflector I mean, if we're taking pictures of people's houses, one camera and a reflect. <sighs> I got home that day, and like any musician, I channeled my inner O'Shea Jackson Sr. And I was, I was ready to create an entire album angled at this one lady walking her cute little dog. Because as far as I was concerned, there's a million and one different scenarios in which my brother and I and our guest didn't walk away from that situation as lucky as we did that day. But I let it go. It's not that big a deal. People have had to deal with worse. I did what any Gen Z would do. I tweeted about it and I called it a day. I let it go. It's not even my first time experiencing racism in this country and as far as stories go, it's not even the worst one I have to share. But I won't ever forget it. I won't ever forget Pomeranian Karen. I can't. One, because <laughs> I find it extremely hilarious. And two, because of how not funny it actually is. The one thing I noticed about watching this movie a second time is how Brian Stevenson chose to express empathy with everyone as much as he could, wherever he could. You see it every time he sat down with somebody who was wrongfully arrested or with that person's family. You see it when he sits down with Ralph Myers, the man who pretended to be a key witness against Johnny D. The man who was the proverbial nail in Johnny D's coffin. We see Stevenson sit down with Myers twice and both times, he appeals to his better judgment, his humanity. Even when he showed up to the door of, I guess what you could call a major antagonist or a rival or whatever, 
Even when he showed up to Chapman's door and called him out for delaying Johnny D's retrial, he didn't attack Chapman. Brian Stevenson, in fact, offered him an olive branch. Brian Stevenson gave him the opportunity to be on the right side of history, to bring an end to the nightmare that Johnny D and his family were experiencing. Of course, Chapman doesn't take it, but Brian didn't have to do that. He had every right to curse, to rage, to, to fight, yet he decided to bridge the gap. And while that isn't something that can be applied to every situation, it is a very powerful example Brian Stevenson has set. And as happy as egging Pomeranian Karen's house would make me feel, choosing peace does feel like a much better option. If for nobody else, then for myself. And that's probably what's most important. And the world could really use a lot more peace. Listen, I highly recommend that you watch the movie Just Mercy. And whether you watch it or not, I feel like it's definitely worth doing some research. There's a lot of interesting things that happened, a lot of interesting things that don't get resolved. One of the things my brother said to me when he was watching the movie with me was he's just so upset with how these things always end with the court case ending and yes we save the people who need to be saved but the people who always put us in this position are never held accountable and i i guess that's just because these things are based on true story and in true and and in, and in these true stories these people are just never really brought to justice they're never or rather they're rarely brought to justice for the things they've done and we never really get that satisfaction and why i mention that is because sheriff tate I remember I went to do research on Sheriff Tate, and I highly encourage that you do as well. This guy has never been clean. I, I was shocked to discover just how many things, how many scandals he single-handedly been the origin of, whether they were things like how he treated Johnny D and Ralph Myers, or how he was running prisons, and I was shocked to see that he was re-elected as a sheriff like six times. That's... It's crazy to me. It's, it's, it's abominable. So it makes no sense. But I don't want to end this video on that negative a note. I highly encourage that you watch it. Prepare yourself. It's highly emotional. But I think if there's one good thing to take away from this, it's that there's a lot of people out there doing work like Brian Stevenson. Uh, the, the Equity Justice Initiative, the EJI, they work solely on donations and... Uh, the victims and their families never have to pay a single penny in terms of legal fees and that's amazing but yeah that was me guys I just wanted to sit down and I wanted to tell tell you a story and review this movie that somebody asked me to do because I think they low-key wanted to see me cry on camera uh, but that's all for me guys if you like this video you know what to do uh, subscribe hit the bell and visit our patreon and let us hold a dollar as always a big thanks goes to the patreon bros that you can see on screen thank you for giving me the confidence to be in front of a camera and not feel obligated to tell a joke i don't know what the next video is going to be on but i promise you that guy one and two will return in fact they will be back next week they will be there i promise as always, you can let me know what movies or series you'd like to know my thoughts on next by just leaving something in the comments below. You can email us at nenobrobusiness at gmail.com. But by now, I'm sure you know that you can always find me here every Thursday with another video on my thoughts on movies and series and stuff. Until the next one, take care. And I mean that. Bye-bye. Okay, <laughs> I know we said no jokes for this one, but I want to take a second to, 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 to just appreciate how Jamie Foxx featured on a song that says when he gets on, he'll leave your ass for a white girl. And now he's playing a character who's getting into all of this trouble because he cheated on his wife with a white girl. That's kind of funny. You have to admit, all, like all seriousness aside, that's actually kind of funny. <laughs>